Lightning has been completely transformative in the industry, obviously. You don't need me or Brian to tell you that. Many of you have experienced it and lived it yourselves. For many people, header bidding has been a fantastic boon. And if I can paint some imagery for you, it's like driving down the Audubon in summer, wind blowing through our collective hairs with sunglasses on our faces, making us look really super cool as our publisher revenue dramatically increases uh, by 30, 40, 60% or more, depending on the setup. But I think that we're at a pretty critical point right now in the industry where we have a lot of successes, but we haven't necessarily yet fully understood some of the consequences that could potentially happen here or really where the road goes and diverges. What we really don't want to see happen is something like the Audubon turning into this delightful little pavement that's going right off a cliff. We want to make sure that header bidding remains really effective for everybody and that we can really understand the impacts that it's having on the full supply chain and understand how it, we can make it work for the entire industry. It's a really transformative technique that I think we can learn a lot from. So to talk about some of the issues about where header bidding could be going, about where header bidding is at today, and how do we make sure that we don't really plummet off that cliff, Thelma and Louise style, uh, we have a very delightful panel that I'd like to introduce. So first up, we have Henry Erskine Crum from Facebook. <laughs> Henry is in product on Facebook's publisher solutions. We have Tom O'Donnell from Gumtree, who runs the advertising <laughs> operations there. And we have Paul de la Nuguerre, who <laughs> uh, from the Telegraph. Thank you all. So first, first question has to be, starting with Paul and moving way over here, starting with publishers. What's header bidding doing for your business? How is it going? What's the best and probably the most terrible part of it for right now? Um, well, header bidding's having a huge impact on a business in a very positive way. Um, you know, our, our goal as a, as a publisher is to create a unified auction um, across all demand. Um, and so header bidding for us is the first step on that journey to create that kind of nirvana of all demand coming in, um, you know, which will you know, uh, create a, a, you know, a positive revenue opportunity for us. Um, and, um, and for me, I, I, I think it's very exciting. Um, I, I, you know, you kind of mentioned there about it being scary. I'm, I, I'm not actually scared at all about this. I'm, I'm very excited about where this is heading um, in terms of, uh, uh, as a publisher, having access to, to all that demand and the transparency that, that, that can bring us going into the future. Yeah, it's, I agree, it's a little bit scary. But it, for us, it's been a, a big growth in, in revenue. Um, however, at, at the expense of a bit of operational uh, burden. Um, you know, we've, we've gone all in. Uh, we formed a squad, um, which, which comprises of a cross-functional group of engineers, out operations, commercial, and a project manager, um, that actually all they do is double down the small knit group and iterate and iterate. And we're currently using the um, pre-bid open source. Um, and obviously, the eBay Classifieds group as a whole is a, is a very um, engineering-led company. So we're using the engineering muscle to actually empower revenue which is kind of a nice thing, because usually they sit siloed. But uh, header bidding has actually meant more cross-functional collaboration uh, within companies. And it's been, a, it's been a really good thing for us. So for both of you, you've seen good success, OK success. Like, how does header bidding meet your expectations so far? I mean, I mean, I mean very good success. Um, you know, you know, you know not, not to quote specific numbers, of course, but, um, but, but high kind of double-digit percentage growth in terms of programmatic revenues year on year um, by going down this route. Um, so, 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 you know, it, it, it kind of shows when you start bringing partners in, uh, you know, to compete in this kind of unified way, it kind of shows the inefficiencies of the old system. And, and, and for any publishers using waterfalls, um, you know, this is a big step forward um, from that kind of, you know, which I'm now calling the antiquated old strategy of, uh, of programmatic. So two publishers that are seeing a lot of success, uh, mainly through increased competition for their very quality impressions. Henry, talk about Facebook's perspective of header bidding. Yeah, so we are, I'd say we're still in the early stages of 
trying to make our bidding product work. And it's been really interesting. I think the reason why we wanted to go into this space primarily was because when we were just competing on average CPMs inside of Waterfall, we weren't getting to express the value that we wanted to pay for an impression. And so with header bidding, it has given us, I mean, we win a lot more inventory in that, in that way. And I think the main reason is because we get to bring the full weight of Facebook's demand curve uh, into the auction, increasing auction density significantly, which has been good for publishers. When publishers work with us, um, they see a pretty immediate uptick just from the competition that we bring. So from, from that perspective, it's been very successful. On the other side, to go to your point around the operational burden, it is incredible the spectrum of integrations that we work with. I don't think there is a single similar integration across the many, you know, the three digit, three digits of publishers that we work with now. And the consequence of that is that the, you know, we have a metric internally called auction participation rate. It gives us an indication of what level, well, like how much of the auction we can actually participate in. And it ranges from 4% to 88% uh, from publisher to publisher. And so I think this goes to the core of the challenge of header bidding at the moment, which is around setting up the operational team to be able to support a technical integration like this to get the most out of it. And we certainly see that the teams that we work with that invest the most in engineering, and it isn't a big, it isn't a big investment, but the, but the teams that invest in engineering and take the time to uh, optimize their integrations, to understand the incremental increase in revenue that each demand source brings, get the most out of it. That's, that's been the key factor for us here globally as well, locally in the UK, is head of bidding's transparency around who provides incremental value in that chain. And I think combined with the data scientists as discussed earlier with some engineers, you can get very quickly a lot of minimum viable products, like quick MVPs to test who is adding incremental value. And just because, for instance, server to server, you can plug in an infinite amount of partners, doesn't mean you should. You know, what we found out is that you find a, a core select group of partners, each of which provides incrementality, and you just double down on that lot, and you get so much more benefits than if you try and run an ecosystem with thousands of partners and you're making tiny incremental gains on each of them. You know, we found that by using the data science and actually understanding incrementality, that's where the yield really, literally hockey sticks at that point. You can really identify, and I think it was mentioned earlier, there will be bodies along the road um, where companies actually that don't provide incremental value will not find themselves in a, in a business model in the next few years. But, so but, 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 but that's what's really important, right? Is, is that it's, it's actually quite early days on this whole journey. Hmm. And I think that's what everyone needs to remember, is that we're, everyone is still learning how that configuration is going to work, which is why there are so many different ways of doing this at the moment, so many you know, different ways of using pre-bid, using a managed service. Um, and and, and you know, we all need to figure out you know, what the standards are as we go forward. So, um, so it's really important that people get involved just so they start learning, you know, rather than kind of being scared, as you kind of mentioned earlier, to get involved. And just to build on that point, I think the interesting thing is what header bidding has done is provided a huge amount of optionality to both advertisers and publishers. And what I mean by optionality is lots of new transparent pipes are flowing between the impression and the bidder. And I think that the businesses, and I think this is like one of the most important things that I see in this industry, the businesses that invest in the analytical infrastructure, in the ability to run A-B tests, in the ability to carve out, even if it's a small amount of dedicated engineering resource, will be the ones that really succeed, succeed from a yield perspective uh, and, and will be able to continue to drive growth. Because being able to run those tests that you're talking about and understand incrementality is the key to making header bidding really successful. This is a future of yield optimization, really. Yeah. It's working with those partners managing that. Yeah. How about the role of the wrapper <clears throat> going forward? The role of the wrapper, I mean, the, so, so there's a number of different options. Um, we kind of have three buckets that we work with. 
the, 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 in regards to uh, success. The first one is uh, those in open source using pre-bid with engineering teams tend to be the most successful. You then have managed solutions. The challenge with the managed solutions is you'd have no visibility into what's going on. And from our side, working with managed wrappers, it actually can be quite frustrating um, trying to understand if an integration isn't working, why it isn't working? Because we just don't have the logging and data available to help us work with that publisher. And you don't have the engineering counterpart to. And we don't have the engineering right. counterpart. And then you have the other end of the spectrum, which is people that use open source wrappers, but don't really have the engineering resource. They get you know, a third party to go and set it up for them. And that's also like, a, you know, that's the worst place that you can be. So I think, you know, from my perspective, number one, invest in engineering if you can to do monetization, set up your own wrapper, have control. I think that point it goes to the very heart of why header bidding is a thing around control. Um, you know, when you invest in a third party piece of software and you're a digital ads business and you can't see what's going on and you can't understand why somebody has won an impression, you know, I think the first principle, on a first principles level, the reason why having and are investing in open source uh, wrapper is because you're starting to truly uncover a bit of a bit of your stack and taking back control. So, you know, that's that's my that's my take on it. But having said that, if you don't have the re the resource and the capabilities, there are a bunch of great managed wrapper partners out there um, to work with. So we talked about uncovering more transparency within the stack. How about the supply chain in general? How has understanding that impacted your business? Yeah, that's, that's the thing that even the practitioners struggle with at times, because we all talk about one auction. The reality is you're dealing with three. You're dealing with the DSPs in what advertised they surface, the SSPs which won in the auction, and your header bidding competing with your direct sales. Um, it'd be easy to do a catch-all. I, I understand everything. But the reality is that it's a four-piece puzzle. It's advertiser, publisher, SSP, DSP. And actually, right now, most people only have one quarter or maybe half of that, of that puzzle. Um, and actually, it's going to require collaboration or the cutting of middlemen in order to actually see the whole picture. And I don't know which is the better way and which way the industry will go. But at some point, we're going to need a full picture uh, to look at. And I think, I think that, that transparency of data all the way through the ecosystem is going to be a really important thing for us to challenge as we go forward. You know, and at, at the moment, when we work with partners, every one of them has got a different standard for how they're willing to expose data to us, um, and which means we get different insights from different partners. And you know, and 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 somehow, as an industry, we need to figure out, you know, what 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 is the standard by which data is exposed all the way through the chain, you know. Um, that allows everyone to have the right amount of data to be able to make those, those decisions and get the data science guys able to optimize on, on both sides of the equation. Um, because, because right there, you know, we also, we've got second price auctions, we've got first price auctions. I don't think anyone really fully understands yet how all this is interacting together um, in order to optimize on both ends uh, of, of the spectrum, both the advertiser and the publisher. I think this comes back to tests. Um, the, the publishers and advertisers that understand the different pipes between the impression and themselves and vice versa and are able to run multiple different tests in the same way that Guardian has here run some really interesting tests uh, around how budget flows, how much is taken through the middle. Um, and I think it's fair to say you could go and do that and test that through AppNexus versus Index Exchange versus Facebook, and see what sort of uh, what sort of differences you get in those tests. Yeah, I think that uh, the transparency aspect here is really critical, tied yeah. with increasing sophistication yeah. and understanding of again the supply chain. So when it comes to long-term threats around header bidding or long-term challenges. Uh, Tom doesn't believe me. <laughs> <laughs> but what do you think is probably the biggest potential change that we could see here in the short term that could ruin some of the benefits of header bidding that we've seen? The, the reality is header bidding is like my three-year-old son. It's, it's, the to it's a, like a toddler that's running around. It's just figured out how to walk and to run and to communicate. And it's experimenting with everything it touches. And some things he touches just gets broken, like my phone I showed you earlier. Um, and some things he latches onto and he really has a great time with. We're still experimenting. You know, I don't think, if I asked him now what he wants to be when he grows up, 
He doesn't care. And I think we're in a stage of head of bidding where I don't think I care. Where, where are we going to be when we grow up? I think at the moment we're still experimenting and finding out transparency. We don't have a full picture. You know, we need to do a lot more MVPs and tests and engineering and, and literally collaborating before we figure out where we're going to go. Maybe it's a yield management system. Maybe it replaces the ad server. I don't know. But the pitfall is if we start to standardize and we start to put too many you know, walls around what we're doing and restricting what engineering can do and the creativity that they can do, the pitfall is, is that it stays in its current evolution. Um, I don't think we should be scared of evolving and iterating, because that's what makes advertising so fun to be in, because it never stands still. Uh, and I think the cliff face is we stand still. I think we just need to keep evolving. I think one interesting thing is that Facebook's strategy probably would not have been possible a year ago, the current strategy of embracing header bidding with the Facebook audience network. Uh, is that mostly a transparency play, or is it the full access to supply, or is it some other aspect of header bidding that was so appealing? Uh, for us, it's, it's three things. First one is fair, the fair capability to win an impression. So we want to be, at the end of the day, we want publishers to maximize yield We in the audience network, and we want to be expressing the value that we want to pay, and, that we want to, and we want to be competing in environments where highest price wins. That's the first thing. Second thing is around transparency. What we mean by transparency is transparency of the third party piece of technology that you are managing your, ad to, your, your stack with. We want to make sure that publishers understand why the advertiser that won their impression won their impression. And we think that's really important for, them to be able, for publishers to be able to make strategic decisions around how to build and manage their stacks. Paul, do you think that's important? Do you think the transparency aspect of who's going to win in the header auction is important for a publisher to be able to really optimize their stack? Oh, it's hugely important. You know, the, the, the data that, that we're trying to look at is, is, is not just who's winning, but who's losing. Um, because it's really important for us to understand, are there brands out there that, that, are, that want to buy the Telegraph audience, but they're maybe not winning, or they're, they're, you know, they're, they're just losing by pennies? Um, you know, because having that transparency allows us to go and have a conversation with them. And I think there's, a, you know, there's, a, it, there's an issue that people think programmatic takes all the conversation away. Um, you know, you know, you know, we, that, that data allows us to go, OK, that brand uh, has got a real affinity for our audience because they're bidding on our audience a lot. So, so we should be having a conversation with that brand around how they can buy through the programmatic pipes, but in different ways. because. You know, it's not just all about an open auction. There are many different products that you can participate in um, in the programmatic world. So, so we need to find the right product that fits the right brands, that matches our audience. And that's what that transparency gives us, that ability to have those conversations. So that's, that's what's really important for us. Yeah, I think, uh, I think that transparency is also essential from our perspective and your perspective as well. Uh, going forward, being able to basically end the waterfall and have much more of an attempt at the unified auction is really what we're hoping to get to. I did interrupt you, I apologize, but I really wanted to get Paul's perspective on that. Yeah, and the, the, the third, I think we were also at a critical juncture with this move to server to server. So, you know, I think one of the things that people rightfully get concerned about is user experience. And it's not just user experience because of the latency of the ads being served. So that's one aspect. There's another aspect of latency, which is a direct correlation between latency and yield. Um, and I think this, in, this, this move to server to server can go one of two ways. When it, the move to server to server currently looks like this. You have your client side wrapper. And from all the conversations I have with publishers so far, it sounds like they're going to be making client side calls to lots of client side bidders, as well as the call to the server to then go and make calls to lots of bidders. Um, and I think this is a real challenge, because if the setup ends up becoming that, then it's going to be very hard for publishers to manage user experience and latency in a way that server to server, the benefits that server to server could provide, which comes back to the earlier point of really understanding incrementality of different bidders and figuring out how to just get the bidders that drive incrementality into the server, driving down latency to you know, sub 500 milliseconds. Um, and then you know, there'll be the user experience gains and the yield gains. 
So I think it's really important how the server-server transition plays out. But, but I think it's also going to be interesting to see how everyone plays nicely together. Yeah. Um, you know, because uh, not everyone wants to participate in each other's server-to-server -server connections at the moment. Um, and, and that's going to be a real challenge for how this evolves over the next 12 months, 24 months, um, if people aren't willing to work in each other's stacks. No, and well, on, on latency, very quickly, that's something that is the number one thing that we look at. Um, right now, with Prebid, we don't distinguish the connection speed, which is incoming. We don't distinguish the size of the ad units. We don't distinguish any of the minutiae. It's not optimized. You know, I don't think header bidding is optimized towards latency currency. Header bidding is optimized towards yield. And one of the key projects we're tackling this year is how do we flip it on its head and optimize towards latency and then see if we can, instead of having trade-offs, try and have the best of both worlds, whether that's lazy loading, whether that's, you know, we need to look at the file sizes that are coming through. We need to be more transparent because we need to be smarter with how we do. Some people are on fiber connections, some people are on 2G. Right now, a lot of publishers are you know, criminal that they're treating those connections as the same. So user experience, and this is why it's important to have your engineering teams and your core product teams working alongside your revenue teams to make sure that you're not creating trade-offs and you're actually working towards the best solution. Awesome. I want to thank the panel for talking about header bidding with different perspectives from different sides of the industry. I think there's a general agreement on where header bidding is at in the industry, where it's going, and hopefully how we're going to help get it there. Uh, for, more t uh, for more conversation about pre-bid servers, specifically the server-to-server -server header bidding solution that we launched, there is a breakout session later today. You'll get to see more of me, so obviously you should come to that. But I'd like to introduce Tom Shields, the AppNex's chief strategy officer now, who is going to be introducing uh, the ad server panel. And thank you, panelists. Yeah.